Diabetic bladder dysfunction is the most common diabetic complication affecting up to 87% of patients. And this represents a huge clinical challenge since there are currently no targeted therapies. In order to develop these much needed targeted therapies, we must first understand how diabetic bladder dysfunction progresses. And we know that inflammation is a key factor responsible for this. One particular source of inflammation is mediated through the NLRP3 inflammasome. Diabetic metabolites will accumulate in the urine and activate the NLRP3 inflammasome within these urothelial cells, leading to pyroptosis. The main question we want to address is how does NLRP3 activation impact barrier function? In order to address this question, we used a novel genetic mouse model. We crossbred the type 1 diabetic Akita mice with NLRP3 null mice, and this yielded four distinct groups. We had non-diabetic and diabetic mice with NLRP3, and we had non-diabetic and diabetic mice without NLRP3. And it's important that we assess these mice at the 15-week time point. At 15 weeks, these diabetic mice display an overactive bladder phenotype. Interestingly, this phenotype doesn't develop in diabetic mice lacking the NLRP3 gene. We isolated bladder from 15-week mice and used qPCR to measure genetic expression of various markers of tight junctions, adherence junctions, as well as uroplakins. We see that diabetes significantly reduces the expression of most barrier function genes. Interestingly, we don't see this reduction in our diabetic mice lacking NLRP3, and here we see that barrier function gene expression is comparable in our non-diabetic mice as well as our diabetic mice without NLRP3. Therefore, we conclude NLRP3-dependent mechanisms activated during diabetes dysregulate barrier function genes. Our current and future studies involve assessing barrier function using an in vivo as well as in vitro models. Thank you, and I'll be happy to take any questions that you might have.